And joining us now as we continue our conversations talking about the carbon markets and learning more from Agoro Carbon Alliance with us here today, Steve Hasselman with Agoro Carbon Alliance is joining us. Steve, great to have you on Market Talk. I hope you're doing well, sir. Yep, doing very well. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Well, thank you for the time. I want to jump in here. We're going to focus on some of the agronomic benefits of conservation practices here today and, and how this ties into the work that Agoro Carbon Alliance does. So just for starters, let's set this up here, Steve. Kind of give us a thousand foot view. What's your take on on just some of the, the basics of conservation practices and things that farmers need to remember if they're looking at getting more involved in the carbon markets and carbon sequestration? Yeah, for sure. Well, with our program, what we look at for the most part are uh, tillage reductions, cover crop incorporation, and uh, nitrogen rate reductions. And, you know, when when we think about our uh, tillage reduction piece, really, we're going after soil structure building and organic matter building, you know, and with that comes so many other uh, good things, you know, improved infiltration you know your soils can hold more of the water that we get you know now it seems typical to get a a two or three inch rain in a one day period and you know if your soil doesn't have the ability to soak that in like a sponge it all just goes running down the waterways and into the streams and you you can be in a drought then two weeks afterwards Mm -hmm. um we you know we see that time and time again in our dry years where we go from our historically no-tilled fields and you hit the fence and you see the the deep rip field cultivated one and yeah their their corn starts rolling a lot sooner than ours does with uh with the no-till portion um so that's a, a you know a big piece of it there and also the erosion in itself you know when we can uh when we can get away from losing you know literal tons of soil per acre off of a field you know, more than just the uh, the short-term fertilizer cost associated with that, uh, the long-term land degradation of that. You know, if, you, if you're paying these, uh, you know, 10 to 15 plus thousand dollars an acre for a farm today, um, you know, you want to make sure that that's going to be a productive farm long-term for you. Well, you hit on a couple great <laughs> things there. And I think uh, the biggest one for me that I know we hear a lot about is that topsoil and losing that topsoil or trying to not lose topsoil. And I think about, you know, a lot of ground across the the Midwest, the plains, et cetera. Um, just it, folks who've already maybe done a few different things, looking at no-till or cover crops, et cetera. It, it's so important to look at that because, you know, we lose that topsoil. We're losing that prime, prime, you know, soil to grow our crops in, Steve. Mm -hmm. And it takes a long time to build back. It can be gone in a, you know, a few years time and, you know, it can take centuries to try to build that back. So it's, uh, it's very important to look at. Well, and, and thinking about some of those conservation practices, how's that tie into looking at carbon sequestration in the carbon markets? I know we've been hearing a lot (laughs) more uh, about this topic here in recent years. It's kind of come back around and become very hot topic, so to speak, among uh, farmers and ranchers. So uh, when you look at some of those agronomic benefits, uh, how does that tie into, you know, sequestering that carbon into our soil, Steve? Yeah. So with, uh, with those tillage reductions, the, the main focus with those for our carbon, um, talks, I guess, is the, the, uh, that strategy is keeping the carbon that's sequestered by that growing crop in the soil. You know, when you stir things up, that will over oxidize that organic matter that you've been building with that crop or the soil organic carbon, I mean, um, and that'll allow it to leave. It speeds up the carbon cycle and it, uh, it'll evaporate out, not evaporate, but oxidize off into the atmosphere and, and you lose your organic matter or your soil organic carbon. So by reducing tillage, we can t- kind of trap that down in the soil, um, in the deep roots and, and build that way, which is where our carbon credits are derived from, um, soil mm-hmm. samples taken that, that measure how much soil organic carbon is being built by these, uh, plant additions. Um, the other side to that with, uh, you know, when we talk about cover crop addition, the, uh, the strategy there is to s- actually sequester more carbon, um, to, to just, physically pull more out of the atmosphere with a living crop doing photosynthesis longer than we would typically have a cash crop growing. Um, that, that crop is, uh, or that cover crop is continuing to pull atmospheric carbon out of the air and build it into the soil, which you hopefully will retain with the tillage reduction in conjunction with it. 
Well, Steve, as you think about some of these practices and the work that Agoro Carbon Alliance is doing and working with farmers to look at conservation practices, look at carbon sequestration, what would be just some tips maybe you would have for growers as they're maybe looking at getting started with some of these practices or maybe if they've already started a few things, uh, what what would you tell growers right now? Um, you know, the the biggest thing is just to to have a vision with it and a goal in mind and not give up necessarily on it because, uh, you know, with these, it's very important that you hone in on a benefit that you want to see, you know, whether it's, you know, reduced erosion um, or to be to participate in a carbon market uh, in itself, um, you know, have that goal in mind that you're trying to, uh, you know, achieve because so often I hear of guys that want to give it a try and they don't necessarily know what benefit they're trying to, uh, to shoot for. And, you know, you can't really gauge success very well without knowing what your target is. So um, that and, you know, surround yourself with knowledgeable people um, neighboring farmers, or, you know, I, I can say with our carbon program, there's a, you know, a, an army of people like me <laughs> that are, uh, all staged out in, you know, their local regions. And we've all got experience with, uh, transitioning from conventional farming methods to these conservation oriented methods. So we're here to be a resource for the farmers if they do, um, run into any issues or have any questions with these transitions. So just, uh, you know, it's always good to over communicate. If you've got a question on anything, uh, reach out and, and people in this space are typically more than willing to help. Definitely. And I know folks can reach out to Agoro's uh, grower success team that Steve was alluding to very easily. AgoroCarbonAlliance.com is a great way and a great place to get started. Steve, before we let you go, any final thoughts you have for us here this week? Um, really just, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to try some of these new things and, you know, keep in mind also that really what we're talking about isn't necessarily anything new or earth shattering, you know, people were, were planting cover crops in the, you know, early 1900s and, and they had seen the benefits of them, you know, way back then. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, nothing that we're promoting is necessarily <laughs> earth shattering news that it has long-term benefits and, uh, you know, just, just don't be afraid to jump on board. Well, you can learn more again online at agorocarbon.com, agorocarbonalliance.com. Both uh, will get you there to Agoro's website to learn more with that. Steve Hasselman from Agoro Carbon Alliance. Thanks for joining us. And I know we'll talk to you again next week. We'll talk about carbon contracts. Thanks for the time though this week. Yep. Thank you, Jesse.